Uh, last time, elder people would say like, uh, when you when you are studying, enjoy enjoy school life lah. Then when you start working, then you will miss like all those school life. But studying is still not my thing. In the past, people talk about success as largely defined by the five C's. And there was a perception that you need to go through a certain pathway in the education system and then get a certain type of job in order to achieve the five C's. So I think we would like to break away from these stereotypes, let people pursue their own ambitions and aspirations and um, try to minimize the comparison. It's, it's a very difficult thing to do, particularly in our small society. It, it is very challenging. And everywhere you go, you meet your family, your relatives, people talk, aunties and uncles talk, they talk about their children, they compare. And I can appreciate how some of that can sometimes be quite oppressive to young people. I think um, now, like this time, some careers don't need your cert, like being a performer. So it's more about like your talent. And um, if you have that talent, you can you know pursue it and you can still be happy and successful in the future. We have to paint to them the picture of possibilities. Mm. Yeah. And really not to give up when it's too, too early. Yeah. As long as she's okay with whatever that she has chosen, she has achieved success in life. I think I would want to be a teacher. I want to pursue like nutrition, food science because I feel like I can contribute better using that. Maybe being a nutritionist or um, I actually may want to be a teacher that maybe teaches that subject. Education is a long-term process, it's a long journey. So it's not just about what they achieve in the first 15 years in school, it's more important about what they achieve in the next 50 years beyond the school. If we are able to imbue in them the curiosity, the desire to learn, to improve, and they carry that throughout their whole life, then I think we have uh, succeeded. Education is a process of continuous adaptation and evolution. Because the needs of every generation is different. When we first started this journey many years ago, we have fewer resources. So our goal at that point in time was to uplift the general standards. But as we progress, then we can look into how to cater to the more diverse needs of our students. I admire how um, the teachers I have right now help the students a lot to learn more about themselves so that the students who are, you know, the future of the country can develop to uh, make a better society. Sometimes the teachers would talk to me and, you know, they ask me about my well-being and they also, like, tell me ways to improve myself. What I did wrong, um, it may be, you know, a bit hard to take in because, you know, I'm trying my best but uh, some things can go wrong. And it's okay, I just, I learn how to grow from it. Life is all about trying to surpass oneself throughout life continuously rather than to try and surpass someone else at a certain point in time. So this is very fundamental to us, how we approach education. I think, you know, all of us have different talents, right? And we all have different passions. If you are passionate about something, you have to, you know, made an effort to try and pursue it and I feel like everyone should be given a chance to do something that they love. And that's how I think we want people to make sure that they appreciate a diversity of strength. But that touches on another point which is we need to respect a diversity of professions. Without that respect for the diversity of professions, our society cannot work and our society will not have the diversity of strengths. Right? Never, never look down on someone else who is doing something that's different from us. 
if you can find something that you like and you see that there is a fulfillment at the end, so you can plunge headlong into it, it becomes a calling. And when you go into that, you start to specialize. You start to get ahead of the competition. Then become ultimately very, very good at that work. And you move on to the third part, which is when you become masters. You know, like Star Wars, the Force, right? You know, you become a part of one. Eventually, you become the master of that craft. Whether it is in welding work, whether it is in electrician work, plumbing, I think those are the type of craftsmanship that we are trying to encourage. I'll, 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 settle, I'll settle the bidet first, then I'll try to hack a little bit, then see if it's uh, easy to access. Then if you can ASAP settle, then chop chop. If not, probably need to arrange another day. Okay. Yeah. You may think that uh, those lawyers, doctors are more highly respected, but then one day when your toilet gets choked or your pipe bursts, you still need us to come and settle for you. Lah. So every single job is uh, important in their own in their own ways. But then uh, I think this is a personality thing because uh, I like to move around. I like to go to different places, meet different kind of people. I don't like like those office jobs. Then keep staying at the same place, meeting the same people. So plumbing will give me like more flexibility to meet other people, then uh, solve their issue. I feel like there's a sense of accomplishment. La. The median age of plumbers are going up. Younger workers are not necessarily going into this industry. So you see there's a, actually a national need for such things, a public good. But is the market structure encouraging our students when they graduate to go into these industries? I would say that, well, there's more work to be done. I think it's very hard for us to change other people's mentality. La. As in, indeed, I agree that this kind of job is is, is saikang job la. because it's dirty, it's uh, tedious, you sweat, then your position is uh, a bit weird, this kind of stuff. But then, I only can say when they really need it, then they know how important is, is, uh, is this job. La. Good afternoon. We want to make sure that our workers across the board are all being taken care of. I think that what we have in terms of uh, the system is not perfect. But I think it largely is we're moving forward together with the times. Change is not a constant. Uh, change is accelerating, right? And the pace of disruptions is, 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 is you know, also increasing. Within, what, three to five years, you find that you have to upgrade yourself again. If we don't have this Continuous training, right? Upgrading, reskilling, we're going to be left behind. Like all those equipment, everything is, is getting higher, uh, more and more high tech. So for us, we need to uh, improve. La. Then after that, all these things, all those equipment will help us to make our job easier. So I think next time for me, probably I will, I will get more like those uh, equipments to lessen my burden. So. I think as all this technology is coming, uh, become better and better, it will help us in a sense. Uh. I'm 58, I'm still learning. So it's important that that mindset has to be there. We have pre-employment training. Continue to train and upgrade and upskill yourself so that you continue to stay not just relevant, but get onto the cutting edge type of training for you to think out of the box and to move ahead. The A that we talked about is about anchoring apex industries, apex economic sectors here and alongside with them, bring along Apex talent. Then we set up policies, framework, to make sure that when they, they come here, they also anchor here, and they hunker down by transferring their skill sets, their expertise, their experience, and also the economic benefits to our people, which forms the, the broad middle, which is the B. So with that kind of broad segment, then we can build our reserves, we build you know, more financial resources, that then enable us to, you know, carry the people who are not as fortunate alongside with us, right? So, which brings us to the sea. Then for those um, uh, people who are at different social strata and so on, we have these help schemes to help them. So, we have a, a sustained initiative to drive up the wages of our bottom 20%. We have various progressive wage models that we put in place to make sure that um, you know, all of our low-wage workers are well taken care of. In fact, by, 
by next year, by 2024, 2025, 9 in 10 low-wage workers under the progressive wage model will see an uplift in their salaries. It is certain that the Singapore population is ageing and the implications are severe. The workforce ratios of retirees versus active working people is going to be lopsided. But I always believe that in life, you need a purpose and somehow it is the work that allows you to continue to build your social spheres, the social relationships. And many of the, the studies that have been done, uh, you know, actually evidentially shows that, that this relationships is actually one of the single most important determinant to a long, happy and productive life. I would say find that personal drive that matters to you so that you can find at your own level what gives you satisfaction, contentment, passion in your job. With that drive, develop those competencies to make your dream come true. I think at the end of the day, if your mindset is such that you are looking for fulfillment and a different type of, of, of joy in serving, I, I think it's, uh, it's okay. For us, success means that throughout the life of the individual, the person is confident, is able to contribute, is able to take care of himself. It really depends on what kind of success uh, you want to achieve. You still need to put in hard work. Uh. Nobody is going to spoon feed you. Well, my view is success is to be the best version of yourself. And everyone is different. Everyone has different dreams and ambitions. We don't have to compare. We don't have to chase after someone else's dreams. What's the point? Life is short. Hmm. I feel like success to me is when I'm able to support my family and, um, you know, give back what they gave to me. You know, they are going to grow old and they will need someone to depend on. And I want to make sure that in the future, I'll be there for them. And that is success to me, being able to support those around me. We did consider renting a place when we got married, but it didn't make financial sense to us. Our starting point is, what is the market price of our flats? And how much subsidy must I apply to bring it down to a level that's affordable? for different income levels of Singaporeans. I think all of us indeed in our human nature want to care for others and want to be cared for. So it is a system approach, it's not just individuals. If we work with one another in a coordinated way, it can help people far better and more. It's about helping others, helping others to be the better versions of themselves, helping society to be better.